Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck, and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communication, and how to build strong relationships through the principle of self-government. In this video, we're gonna be talking about shepherding your children. In this video, we're gonna talk about shepherding, what that really means, and how to shepherd our children. I'm gonna share with you key things that you can do that maybe other parents aren't doing to better shepherd your children. The term shepherd is often used in a biblical context. When parents are wanting to shepherd their children, they're usually thinking about the good shepherd in the Bible, or they're thinking about other examples of shepherding that usually is talked about in the Bible. Whether you're a Bible reader or not, the idea of shepherding your children is actually a great image to keep in mind. So what is a shepherd? Well, a shepherd is a person who looks after the sheep. They are a person who guides the sheep to water. They keep the sheep free from danger. They help correct and guide the sheep with their rod, the shepherd's rod or staff. Some people call it a crook. But you know, with this rod, they gently guide their little sheep away from danger, from cliffs and toward the right things. The shepherd sleeps near his sheep. The shepherd never stops watching the sheep. In fact, he's connected with the sheep almost as if they're one family, even though the shepherd clearly is the leader of the sheep. The shepherd knows more. He's been there. He has that life experience to keep the sheep safe. And the sheep have to just follow that shepherd, sometimes when they're not even sure why. Think of our children and the trust that they have to place in us. They don't know the whys behind every every single decision that we make in raising them. They don't understand bacteria in the teeth and so why we have to brush their teeth starting when they're little teeny babies. They don't understand nutrition and why they have to eat certain things more than other things. They don't know. Now sure, over time, we're gonna try to explain as many of these whys as possible because we are raising other shepherds. Now in the family environment, this is the one place where the sheep end up turning turning into shepherds, which is amazing. So what does it really look like when a good shepherd-minded parent shepherds their little lambs? I do love little lambs and I love the image that I get with them. So I'm gonna use a Bible context here for you. So in the Bible, there's this part where it says, and he had his lambs on his right side and his kids on the left. I know many people use the term kids. There are many videos on this channel that have the, the word kids in the title because that's what people type into the search, but I don't love the word because kids usually refers to kind of the more naughty, unruly, like the baby goats versus the little lambs, which are so meek and different. And so I like to think of my children more as lambs. So I usually use the term children and youth when I'm thinking about them. A really good shepherd keeps their sheep in a good frame of mind. They understand who they are and they don't destroy the identity of their little lambs. So for me, I always wanted to call my children children or youth instead of kids, which seems derogatory. And the word teenager is actually one of the most derogatory terms culturally that has been used to describe children. We now embrace it socially. People talk about it, make books for teens. Teens embrace it too. But it used to be a person who actually wasn't turning out right. They weren't called a youth, they were called a teenager if they were having a problem in society. So the way that you think of your children makes a big difference on if you will be shepherding them or just trying to control them. So I have multiple tips that I would like to share with you so that you can properly shepherd your children in love and unity. But before I do that, click subscribe. This channel has a lot of videos that are dedicated to helping you understand how to improve the relationships in your family and how to strengthen self-government in yourself. So click subscribe now so that you'll find more information when you're looking on YouTube. 
So we've already talked about a key tip that I have for you, which is understanding the identity of your child. But don't forget to also really understand the identity of you. What does it mean to be a parent? What is the role of mother? What is the role of father? And I'm not talking about silly responsibilities. Anybody can make dinner, do laundry, mow the lawn, play catch in the yard with a child. I played catch in the yard with my children way more times than my husband did probably, even though stereotypically that's probably more of a dad thing to do. I'm not talking about responsibilities. I'm talking about actual identity. What does it mean to the hearts of all the people in your family that you have the role of mother or father. Now this book here, Roles, is all about understanding who you are to those people, meaning what is your attachment to their hearts. So make sure that you find a copy of Roles, The Secret to Family, Business, and Social Success, so that you can better understand who you are and who they are. A key part of shepherding your children is making sure that you feel a connection with your children on a regular basis. The shepherd knows his sheep. The shepherd knows when they are starting to stray off the path. You've got to maintain that finger on the pulse. You've got to know what is it that they're thinking? What are they processing? So you've got to observe. This is important. Stay focused. Stay attentive. Don't just get into your own stuff all the time. Sure, your work. You've got lots of lists. You're trying to provide financially, possibly, for your family. All those kinds of things. Your service that you give to the community. Your parents that you talk to on a regular basis. Sure, there's all these things that are happening all the time. The plate seems really full sometimes really heavy. But don't forget your number one priority is them during those years of upbringing. And you've got to watch what's going on so that you can do the teaching. A really good parent is proactively preparing their little lambs to succeed so that it's not always doing cleanup work after big problems have occurred. So you watch what's going on, you help them assess what's happening, you're teaching all the time, and then you correct as needed. So let's talk about some of those corrections and what that should look like. When you have a shepherding mindset, you aren't taking a mistake that a child makes personally. It wasn't about you. Maybe they even looked at you and said, I hate you. That's still not really about you. What that's about is where they're at in their brain right there. Right then, they are at mid-brain probably, maybe even going to back brain. They are starting to go out of control. They are in their amygdala part of the brain. The emotions and everything have taken over. This means that they have less ability to think and problem solve or even to connect. They probably have about 40%, maybe even as low as 10%, depending on where they're at in their brain, ability to solve their problem, to seek understanding, and to fully connect and bond with you. This means that they're going to say lots of irrational things. Don't take it personally. Maybe they didn't do their chore that they said they would do. Don't take it personally. You don't have to go to midbrain or backbrain just because somebody else did. You have to make sure that you're always accepting they're going to make mistakes. They're going to need constant teaching because they're a child. There is no such thing as a perfect child. And if you're trying for that, you are actually living a lie. They don't exist, but you can shoot for a certain type of adult. In my book, Parenting a House United, I talk about what my goal was as a parent when I was doing my parenting. My goal was not to raise perfect children. My goal was to create joyful adults who knew what their mission in life was and couldn't wait to fight for it and had solid relationships with God and family. That meant that I was creating a person for the future and they weren't going to be perfect immediately. In fact, none of us are ever perfect, right? So I had this picture in my mind of where I was pointing myself, my teaching, and my child. And it was toward adulthood, which meant when they made mistakes during childhood, I could choose to accept them. I could choose to trust that they could learn and improve from where they were at right then. So make sure that you maintain that mindset of possibility, that growth mindset related to your children and the learning environment, what it's going to do for them. Now, another thing that a good shepherd does is they prepare their family, their little sheep ahead of time 
for success. So they think, what will these little sheep need for health and strength and to grow properly? How can I train them right? So they teach them the skills they need before they even fully need them. In our family, I did the same. Because of all the work I did with therapeutic treatment care with troubled teens for a lot of years, I learned key skills that everyone needs, no matter their age, for success. These four children's books teach the, what I call the four basic skills. The four basic skills are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and disagreeing appropriately. When a person learns these four basic skills, they can maintain calmness and confidence in all of those circumstances and be able to seek the understanding that they need by always being able to use the skill disagreeing appropriately. Those four basic skills are taught to my children when they're young or when I had treatment foster children come to my home, they would be taught to a child even at 17. No one is ever too old to learn these skills. They are adult skills for life. So I taught them the skills and then I also pre-taught them how I would handle the problems if something occurred. This book has the skill set in it for how to correct children when they need correction in a calm, connective, safe feeling way. You don't ever see a shepherd start to beat his little sheep, right? Or yell at his sheep. No, he's calm with them. He keeps them connected to him because he's calm and understanding. That can happen even during a correction. You should feel closer to your children during and after a correction than you even did before. My children learn every single word that I will say when I do a correction. I pre-teach that to them. If they go out of control, if they are starting to be aggressive in some way, they know exactly how I will handle it. They also know exactly how I will praise them and tell them that they've done good things. This is great for them. It decreases their anxiety because it increases predictability. They don't have to wonder if I'm going to try to control them in some manipulative way. No, everything is out on the table. They know all the words that I will say and they know why I'm using those words. Now, of course, when they're little, the whys aren't fully understood, but as they get older, you can explain all those whys and the response respect for you and your self-government as a parent increases through the heart of those older youth that you have living with you. Another tip that I have for you for shepherding your children is have regular meetings. So I have also these meeting journals mentor meetings, couples meetings, and family meetings. I know people have talked about family meetings for years, but you know what I found is that many people that have family councils and family meetings oftentimes end up just having family fights. I know that that happened in my family growing up and it was because we didn't actually know how to have a really effective family meeting, how to discuss things that we might disagree on with each other and how to make sure we get our whole family united and on track. An effective family meeting means that everyone feels invested in it. They actually want to be there. They all have a voice. Now, I know some parent is probably thinking, well, I guess I can't ever do them because there's no way that my husband wants to be there or that my children want to be there. Well, they may not want to be there at first, but if you run them properly and they aren't lecture sessions or times where you just lay down the law, but they're actual discussion times where they feel like they have a voice in things happening in the family, you'll be surprised surprised at how important they also think those meetings are. And just a little tip for you, good meetings should have a time limit. Many parents don't attach a time limit to their family meetings and this is a problem. Now in our family, we said a good family meeting was going to be 20 minutes or less. That means it could be five minutes, it could even be three, but it's not going to go over 20 and the children know that. This also helps keep anxiety levels low. We all have anxiety. Every person experiences some anxiety and when you are in a meeting that you don't know when it's going to get over, your anxiety levels start to go up. 
Now, I don't want you to develop any more anxiety about this video and wondering when it's gonna end because it's going to end right now. But before it does, I wanna tell you about a free gift that I have for you. I have something called a Calm Parenting Toolkit and I wanna give it to you for free so that you can keep having more experiences with learning calmness for yourself and helping your children come to calmness. There are many people that want calmness, real calmness, not the type that manipulates people, but the type that actually changes hearts. And I can help you with that in the Calm Parenting Toolkit and you can have it for free. In the description below this video, there is a link to the Calm Parenting Toolkit. It says something like teachselfgov.com slash toolkit. So click on the link to that right now and you can have the Calm Parenting Toolkit for free so that you can start with this mini course on the road to self-government, unity, and shepherding your family.